you know, via the phone. So call in. You can call in now, 888-575-3769 if you choose to do so. Now, let me get on with reading part of this document. Um, this is from the FBI. Um, I scanned it a little bit, so I don't know which parts to really go on. I'm just going to go and say a few things, but basically this is it. Okay, let me let – me, um, B-I-E means black identity extremist, okay? And this is a scope note here. I'm going to jump around and cut at, at certain points. Um, this intelligence assessment focuses on individuals with BIE, again, black identity extremists, ideological motivations who have committed, targeted, premeditated attacks against law enforcement officers since 2014. This assessment does not address BIEs who have attacked law enforcement officers during the course of officers' routine duties, such as responding to calls and traffic stops in which violent actions were reactionary in nature. Okay, and this is not written in a very formal, it is, but the information is just, and, and they talk in the FBI jargon. So there's some words here that I might just skip over. This assessment is the first FBI analytic intelligence product to assess influences between the sovereign citizen extremist movement and the black identity extremist movement. The FBI has previously reported on BIE retaliatory violence against law enforcement in two products, both of which had findings consistent with this assessment. The 23rd March 2016 FBI Intelligence Bulletin titled Black Separatist Extremists Call for Retaliation in Response to Police-Involved Incidents Could Incite Acts of Violence Against Law Enforcement. Assessed incidents involving allegations of law enforcement abuse and related legal proceedings would likely lead to BSE calls for violent, they made a typo, they meant BIE. Oh, see, FBI can make typos too. Lead to BIE calls for violent retaliation and incite these domestic extremists to commit violent acts against law enforcement. Now, it's redundant. There's a couple of things. They speak about um, uh, Michael Brown and, and Ferguson and how people have um, amped up their, their – maybe they're monitoring people or whatnot, but – I don't see anybody, anybody black shooting on a regular basis, police officers. My dear friend and brother, the brilliant brother Cosmo, they say he did that. Um, they say uh, 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 Micaiah, uh, what, what's his name, down in Dallas, well, they say he did that, right? But on a regular basis, black people basically have been a docile people um, in the midst of the atmosphere that we've had to live in in this country with us being killed and us being harassed, you know? So I'm not crying victim because if the truth be told, I'm not afraid to say it. I'm a black separatist. I'm a separatist. If somebody abuses you in a marriage and beats you down in a marriage, emotionally abuses you, physically abuse, abuses you, mentally abuses you, what do you do? You go and get a divorce. You see, we didn't have a choice here in America. We were brought here and we came up in this. See, in a marriage, you have a choice. In the beginning, you, you can take time to, 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 to look at that person that you marry, right, and assess what they are beyond the honeymoon phase, beyond the first time that you saw them and felt that you fell in love with them. And we get fooled sometimes, even in marriage. But see, us in America here, this was no marriage. We didn't choose this. We didn't say, hey, let's go to America because it looks like something is, is in it for us like others did. And there are many who have uh, their origins here and beyond in Europe and other countries that came here, and now they're not liking what they're seeing. They're not liking it. So how, how do you think we feel not having a choice and being brought here and stripped of our original character, and we can't say anything? We have to be happy-go-lucky. We have to go along with this. When you have white identity extremists who are out there doing stuff, look, not even just the killings and the shootings and beheading people and all the dirt that they do. Could you imagine how much white saliva we eat in the restaurants because they don't like the way we, we look? They take our money and spit in the food. 
That's not caught on camera most of the time. These doctors, these Masonic secret society Illuminati doctors who give us the wrong medication to make us sick where maybe our blood sugar level was off and we weren't diabetic, but because our sugar read high, right? All of a sudden, you're diabetic. Take this medication and mess your insides up. They're stealing our organs. They don't mind the drive-bys and when we kill each other because our organs are taken. And where do they go? Those of us in the so-called black community and neighborhoods, we wait and wait and wait and wait. But you can't tell me that that trillionaire or that billionaire in another country or even here, if he needed something like a heart or kidneys, right, or a liver, you can't tell me that he wouldn't get it immediately. So listen, not to get off the subject, but do not donate your organs. Do not, unless you have a say-so as to where they go. I just want to drop that one in here. Let me read a little bit more of this, and I will share a few of my jotted-down thoughts. Um, I, did, I wrote this down because I knew I would not have enough time to flow, because if I just flow and I had all night, I'd get everything out of me, but I wanted to get it in a condensed way so I can hit it and quit it, like they say. Get your mind out the gutter. Let me read a little bit more of this. Um, the FBI judges it very likely BIE perceptions of police brutality against African Americans have become organizing drivers for the BIE movement since 2014. But the BIE movement, I've never heard this. Like I said, what are we supposed to identify with? Aren't we black? But blackness is illegal now, right? Let me just say this. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the memes that are out there, all the videos and live streams and conversations that are out there. See, they put so much and they allow so much buffoonery to go out against us, to cloud our minds. And now we have these smartphones. We Most of the time, looking down at them dumb, absorbing something that has no uh, mental, physical, or spiritual nutrition in it to boost us as a people. But also there was that small percent of the conscious brothers out there, some who may be a little off, but they're trying because we're, we're all f feeling around for the light switch in the dark, right? So collectively... They didn't anticipate that, and those seeds are being dropped, and many people who didn't know certain things before, the younger folks who weren't taught certain things in their oppressive schools, right? Their, their schools full of propaganda and indoctrination, they got a hold of this, and it's like, oh, my God, now they're changing. Yes, so many of us are still asleep, deaf, dumb, and blind, but there's some of us who are waking up. And this is what the FBI doesn't like. So they call it a black identity extremist. Well, like I say again, I ask you, please, the trolls who are going to eventually come into the uh, comment section, what do you want us to identify with? You see, we're not fooled with this foolishness that you put out there. I can choose my gender and I can choose who I am. And most people choose who they are. See, they like it when you want to whack off your wide, beautiful nose that can breathe in so much more oxygen and get so much more done for your body. They like that. They like when you bleach your skin. It tells them that you have surrendered your blackness, and when you do this, there's a better chance that you'll see success in their system. They love it when you straighten your hair. They love it when you do everything that you possibly can to erase your blackness because, again, that's a, fl that's a truce flag. You have surrendered blonde hair. That means that I've given up. Not only is it an indication that you changed the color blonde on your hair, but it's an indication of the thoughts that you think under that blonde wig or hair that you dyed. So people talk about, oh, white supremacy, you complain about this. No, get out of my way so I can be myself, so we can nurture ourselves. Your system has done so much to us. Then they also say, we didn't do anything to you. We didn't put you in slavery, but you're the beneficiaries of what your forefathers did. If my daddy robbed a bank and stashed the money, and before he died, he said, it's three feet to the right of that tree. Dig it up. It's six foot under. And I dig it up, and I'm enjoying this thing. There are people that were ripped off their pension, their salaries, their money, their investments. So I'm enjoying this money, and I can say I didn't do it, but no. You still got blood on your hands on a divine level. And believe me, the counterintelligence program, this is what it is. Because I, I never knew it. Look, I talked to all kinds of people. 
People text me, they email me, and I never go against their confidence in me. And I have never heard of a black identity extremist. Extremist? Well, let's start looking at some of my notes here. Um, Is there something wrong with being identified as a black person, right? We know we're human beings. We know we're this, we know we're that, we know our lineage and culture. My father's from Jamaica, my mother's from Virginia. I I know all of these different things. But wherever we are, we're black, and they don't want you to know that. They want you to identify with, well, I speak French and Creole, I'm from Haiti, or I speak Spanish, I'm from Puerto Rico, but I have an Afro, and I don't know what that is, but I'm not black. They don't want black because that unifies us all over the world. They want you identifying with the conqueror. They don't want you identifying with each other. That's why that word is in there, black identity. And they throw extremists in there to scare mainstream America, to scare the white folks who are out there who have been buying up guns. And by demonizing us, we become the focal point because now we're disgruntled in this system. We've always been on the bottom of this system. We always drove this system, right? Any area of expertise, we are there. You want to find great air uh, air pilots? We're there. You want great scientists? We're there. You want great thinkers and movers and shakers in in any area in the corporate world? We're there. But they want to make you think that all you can be is an athlete or a rapper or a hoochie or a thought and, and render you powerless because they keep putting these things in your head and they limit the menu of life. You're only going to eat in the restaurant what you see on the menu. Imagine they had a menu for a black person and a menu for everybody else. And they had two things on the menu. You say, well, hamburgers and pizza. And that's all you order. But then for everybody else, they have the full range of the finest meats and fish and vegan fare and anything culinary that was great. And they look at us and say, boy, y'all like some, y'all like some burgers and pizzas. But that's all we've been shown. So that's why we got to take our mind out of the oppressive system. That's a different topic. Y'all know I'm going to keep coming with it. Anyway, is it, a, is it criminal? It's criminal to identify as black. Who deems it criminal? Who are we supposed to identify as? The enlightened or labeled extremists because they're propaganda resistant. They put out so much stuff and tie it into sex, tie it into success, and tie it into everything that at the core You know, I mean, look, we're human beings. We're sexual beings. Satan comes in the straight path. So we have an urge to make love. We have an urge for that type of release and expression, and especially in this hostile living environment. And studies studies have shown, and I have to call my dear friend Angela to find out the exact study, but take my word for it, that when animals are stressed to the point to feel as though they're going to die, There's a need to have sex, not because they're saying, hey, one little dog to another, I've been checking you out, and that tail sure looks sexy hanging between them cheeks. No, it didn't say that, but they want to continue the species that if they can live or somebody lives, they'll live on, right? So this is why I feel with the slow burn of stress in our communities, what else can we do? We're stressed. We don't have any money. We don't have any opportunity. And yes, we do. I understand. I'm not saying that this is the case, but this is the perception of many in the inner cities. You know, it feels good. It's free. Let's do it. And this is why you have so many babies in our community, but that's a good thing. They're killing us off. Make more, right? Um, We know the traps and the minefields set for us. See? Um, we, you know, we, we see things that others can't because of the enlightened or, or not tied down in the survival mode, reaching for the baubles and rubies of the oppressor. Those of us who are enlightened and see through the okie doke, I'm not going to sit here and lust after a car so that, oh, by the time I retire in a couple years, I'm going to get that one. I'm going to drive around, whatever. What is that doing for my people? Is that wrong to think of the whole? See? They don't want us thinking collectively. And yes, we are not monolithic. There's some Catholic blacks. There's some uh, 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 Methodist blacks. There's some uh, uh, blacks in Islam, Muslims, right? There's some atheist blacks. There's some gay blacks, lesbian blacks, right? There's some folks who have education and some who don't. 
some who have money and some who don't. But we're black. And when the oppressor points that gun at us to kill us, he doesn't say or tap you on the shoulder and say, uh, excuse me, black man or black woman, um, are you Methodist? Are you Baptist? Or, They're Baptists. Move along. No problem. We just want to catch the Muslims. They get your black ass no matter who you are. Not just with the bullet. Because that's also a means of distraction. They, they keep doing that to us. But stay out of these damn McDonald's and Burger Kings and KFCs on the corner of your blocks. There's more of those in our neighborhoods. Because that's all we eat. We feel, I'm not saying that's all we eat, right? But we've got to watch what we put on our system. They are poisoning, poisoning us. Ronald McDonald is the biggest terrorist in our neighborhood. And we, we feed this to our kids. You're driving down the highway, and your child sees that long pole, like when you go to I-95, somewhere in South Carolina, North Carolina, and it's all over the country, that long pole, probably like five or six stories up in the air. And it has golden arches. That's all. Your child is so brainwashed. Mommy, mommy, McDonald's. Oh, I'm hungry. French fries, two for two. And you're feeding them poison, right? So just don't look at the fact that they're killing us that way, right? Out, uh, atrazine, the, the weed um, uh, uh, chemical and, and weed killer. I don't mean the weed chemical. Yeah, probably in that too. It has been proven to change frogs from male to female with functional eggs. And this is in our food. So why do you think so many of us are born certain ways, as they say? I'm not knocking any of my brothers and sisters, but this is love talk, y'all. I'm just being real with it. Let me get back on. Um, boom. Uh, what organization does a BIE, Black Identity Extremist, belong to? What organization? See, they want to trigger it where anybody who speaks out for themselves in their own community, being black, raises the, the, the flags and the antennas go up on these jobs and these churches and these neighborhoods. So it'll make you afraid to be a part of an ideology that empowers us. So this is going to scare some from even thinking about it. It's not scaring me. It pissed me the heck off when I saw this. Because I know exactly what they're doing, that mental conditioning. See, they can't stop the divine. They can't stop that. All the evil that has been done to us and others across the world, the covers are being pulled off of them, this United States government, uh, this white supremacist system that is still dominating the world, right? But they know their time is up. It's biblical. It's It's spiritual. It's something that we know, and that's why so many people are waking up, and they don't want people talking strong about it. It is really time to celebrate, because that oppressive world is going to be brought down very soon. I'm a peaceful, law-abiding citizen. I have no record of doing anything to any law enforcement. As a matter of fact, I worked for several years in law enforcement. So what, what threat am I? Our empowerment means that I'm going to tell somebody to go kill a cop? Why would I do that when it's the cops that I call very seldomly? <laughs> and I don't really get in situations where I have to call cops. But if something really jumped off, then we're supposed to, but I shy away from that. Why would I not want righteous cops? Are there any around? Right? Because they damn sure get silent when one of theirs does something to us. Even some of us, they get quiet. I don't understand. Um. This is one of my last statements. I have a whole lot here, but I'm, I have to really get out of here soon. But how can one expect a population to endure an extremely toxic engineered atmosphere and ideology that's diametrically opposed to our existence and not produce the revolutionaries and freedom fighters that champion our survival by equally extreme means? I hear these guys across the country. Many would call them rednecks. They're ready for war. They don't have tanks. They don't have missiles. But they are prepared to defend their own. And I have no problem with that. But why is it a problem that if some of us have an ideology of being prepared to defend our own, it's a problem. We're called black identity extremists. Oh, so you put in another mindset in us, and you're mad that we're going back to our original powerful, too black, too strong mindset, and it's scaring you 
because the Internet has made the world very small, and the world is finally hearing our cries and our disgruntled feeling is being put out there. And some of the same people that you've done wrong across the world, they identify with us now. You have this George Soros-funded Black Lives Matter movement that was made by feminists or created by feminists and lesbians. What you do in your bed is, is your business. But really, how authentic is it? Was it funded to really be used by the news to amp up so much and have these white folks saying they're a problem? They're a problem! And it's just like that uh, razor that has three blades or two. One lifts the hair up, and the other one comes by and chops it off. So Black Lives Matter, did it annoy white folks here in America enough to raise up that consciousness that they have against us? Now they come up with this classification called black identity extremists. Now they're going to say, oh, those are the real boogeymen. Lance had Cosmo on his show, and Cosmo killed three cops. And he says he honors his brother, and he loves his brother. Well, let me ask you something. And this is a touchy statement, and I really have to go. You know I love talking, right? But if, if our mothers or fathers, let's just say our fathers, and for those who didn't have the theoretical father, right? If our fathers who nurtured us and loved us and, and brought us up did something bad and went to prison, is he not still your father? Don't you still love him? Aren't you a little confused as to maybe why he did something wrong, but you're still going to bring him or put some money into his account for commissary and visit him and welcome him back with open arms when he comes home? Well, I mean, look, America uh, idolizes its killers and generals when they go off and we drop bombs on this country and so many were killed, and yes, we are victorious. Victorious? Most of the people in the world know now that when you go and have a, a, a war, it's for a reason, for oil or to take over land or to make a little space for the Jews that are out there and say, yes, we're going to rewrite you into history. You Poles, you Russian, Polish people, they're not Semitic. This world is screwed up. But they give them money. They give them billions every year. And every president that comes in has to swear allegiance to this fake Jew nation. And I'm not hating. It is what it is, but I'm not afraid to say it. And they give them money. And not a one of them built this country for the people to turn around and oppress us. And those who they give those billions to own the media. And we can't say a damn thing. So when you can go on YouTube and say something, now they want to demonize you. And let's watch that channel because we think he has cold words that he said that he's going to be battling. Look, I'm not battling nobody unless you come at me. I'm a peaceful person. I eat good. I live good. I sleep deep. I'm happy with what I make. I'm not lustful over things that I, 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 I don't need. It's crazy. I mean, my mind is focused. This is why I can get so much done. This is why my eyes are open and I'm intense. And they don't want you to be that way, to be fiery enough to have the discipline to pull away from their toxic system. This system is not good for us at all. We don't live long in this system at all. We don't live healthy in this system at all. The next time, for those of you who get on public transportation, on the train or the bus, and I'm going to wrap it up right now, for me, turn around and look at the faces of the people who are going into work. Turn around when they're going to work and watch them when they're coming back. The same damn face. No enthusiasm for a fresh new day for a potential unrealized that you can reach for and get closer to being a better person. They don't think that way. It's just trudging along, trudging along, and maybe one day, next year, I can get my one-week vacation, and all you do is bitch and complain about how you have to go back to work in six, five, four, three, two, one days. See me? This is what I was thinking about today. The plantation does not have my mind. We have to take our minds back. The mind is a very powerful thing, but we're wasting it on this foolishness. Housewives of Atlanta, um, 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 these little gay dancers um, that they had pushing, and all this Tyler Perry, T.D. Jakes, Oprah Winfrey, Boule, foolishness, fake religion, fake entertainment, you know, stuff that is sweet initially. And some of those things can appear good, but what's behind it? What are these people doing for those of us who are suffering while the FBI puts something like that out there? They're protected because they're part of that damn boule. And I'm going to say it every video because I see it more and more. 
I'm going to shut up right now. <laughs> I don't know if I made sense to y'all. I'm going to shut up, and I want everybody else to come join on in. Let's, let's, let's wrap up and talk a little bit. And this is going to go on for the next couple hours. Um, while I do um, hit the road right now, I'm going to change the banner. And this, this screen is freezing up, so we don't know what's going on. So at least I have the audio here, and I'll start it at the part that we started if I do have to use that audio. But my screen is uh, seriously uh, freezing up. So I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out later on. But what I'm going to do, let me check and see who's um Denise, are you still here? And Jack. Let's see who's still here first. Because if nobody's here, I'll wrap it up. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Okay, we got Jack here. But we have nobody else here, and I really have to reach out and put some, um, put it out there that we're doing a live show. Well, listen, um, we have Jack. We don't have anybody else. Jack can't talk by himself. Um, if you want to vibe with me on the phone, Jack, and we keep this thing going, we can. But when I come back later on, I don't care if it's for 30 minutes. It's going to be in the wee hours. I got to go to work right now again. <laughs> I'm going to be singing some Negro spirituals at night because I'm a little fatigued, but you know what? The fire's in my spirit and the fire's in my heart. What I will do now, um, there'll be a lot of shows like this, and I do want to go in on this topic more so, but did I hear you, Jack? Yeah, no, I'm looking around me. I'm outside. So, oh, okay. So you, you, you know, should, I, should I stop this or should I um, continue on? Um, because I don't want to you know, press you I to mean, talk or to say work. some things. Yeah let, let, well, you know, let, yeah, let me go to work and... um. I'm going to come back and be, I want to see the comments. There's so much more that I have to say. There will be a part two to this, and I do want to put it out there formally. I just threw this up like this. Nobody knew I was going to talk about this subject, but um, it's a hot one, and it's one that's going to be over our heads and hanging over our heads for the rest of our time here until we're exterminated. They want us away now. We're like that use, useless tool. You use a tool in the yard. You bought it brand new. You're like, wow, it's a shiny new tool. You use it to do all your yard work. Right? And now it's dirty. The yard work is done. Now this tool is dirty. Right? You don't need it anymore. What do you do? You, to you, right. you need this to the neighbors. You give it away. Or you toss it to the side. We built this country. We're here. And now we're at that point where they don't need us anymore in their mind. We, they don't want us. They don't want to hear about anything they did to us in the past. They don't want to hear, oh, you're whining. You're complaining. Do it like everybody else. Oh. But we have the psychological damage, the spiritual damage and the physical damage to us. Right, but nobody wants to hear that. So, as an abu if you're an abusive in an abusive marriage, guess what? You get a divorce. So they're so caught up in the black separatist movement. But you want you want us to love you? No, that Stockholm syndrome is over. Some of us are still doing it. It's called coons. But for many of us, the Stockholm syndrome is over, and it's like a fire out of control because p persons like. I'm not even putting myself. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my part. If I see it, I got I to gotta tell it. But there's so many great people out there who are telling it and living it and giving lectures who are more knowledgeable than I. Look at Dr. Vibrant Muhammad. I put the, a link up that he's suing UCF, and it's official. But I knew that already for a long time. And we're going to have him either call it or come in. He hasn't been for a while because he's been doing so much. That brother is a trooper. We're going to have him sitting right here, and he's going to talk about that as much as he can um, as far as the legalities are concerned. So I'm going to wrap this up, and I'll be back later on. More thoughts are going to hit me. I'm going to say to myself, oh, man, I forgot this point. I forgot that point. But that document, if you can't find it, it's in the Landscurve uh, talk show room on Facebook. Um, you can probably find it, uh, share it all over the place. Um, Google Black Identity Extremist and put behind it FBI, and that should pull it up, and you'll look in depth, really, because what, what has been done? Anybody who did any of, of these shootings toward police, were they part of this? No, it's an ideology that they can't kill, and they don't like it. They killed Malcolm X, and it, it, he, he was martyred. His, everything went out more. So now so many of us have right. that seed inside of us, and now they don't want that to continue on because the world's catching on. But even aside from anything that one of us could do, their world is crashing. They know this. Right. I don't and they're to, doing everything to mess it up so that we don't have the world for ourselves. 
I, I don't want anybody to go kill anybody else, right, or do anything. But don't don't oppress us and suck from us so you can live higher. This this world is ours too, like the license plate, uh, uh, like the bumper sticker says, coexist. Can't we coexist? I'm not, I'm not saying can't we get along. I'm not saying that. And I'm saying this to make you think: Can we coexist? Evidently not. So I wasn't really saying it. Evidently not. Because when we try, you, you cause trouble all over the world. Wherever you went, you, you raped the people, you robbed them, you stole from them, and then you want to turn around on the two-bit thugs that you call us who are trying to survive, weren't taught anything, steal a little something from the store, a little stick-up kid, and you want to blast on your Jewish media that we're thugs. And here you are killing off whole countries dropping bombs on people. Look at your president. I don't understand it. You demonize us for taking a knee, but you don't say a damn thing about him grabbing a pussy. Now, I'm going to leave it on that. We'll come back, and um, we're going to have more talks. Leave your comments. Subscribe to Landscurve.com. Subscribe to this channel. Hit me up anytime, 407-590-0755, scurvemedia at gmail.com. And um, we're going to boogie. Download the app, Lance Scurve, at the Google Play Store, Amazon Store, in the App Store. But think about that. Taking a knee is such a crime, but grabbing a pussy isn't. Excuse my French. Thank you all so much. I love you all. We'll talk and vibe in a couple of hours. Bye-bye. Lance Scurve out. Make sure to check out The Boldest Blog at LanceScurve.com and follow Scurve on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube under Lance Scurve. If you like this show and you enjoyed yourself, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that every video that I put up, you'll get a notification when it goes up. Also, if you have anybody that you'd like to have interviewed on The Lance Scurve Show, hit me up. 407-590-0755. The Lance Curve Show is not just about talk. We're about putting in that work. And that's the difference. Bring it on. Let's talk and let's share. Take care until next time.